Hi, this is a video on how to make an SU8 master for doing soft and thigh team. Um, so the whole goal of this process is to create something like this. This is a silicone wafer. And on top of it are features that are defined by um, epoxy. So what we're going to do is spin layers of epoxy over the silicon wafer, expose portions of it to UV light, and that will harden portions of it. And after we've done this uh, multiple times for multiple layers, we will then rinse away what's not been exposed to UV, and we will be left uh, with what we have here. And so the first step in doing so is in defining or deciding um, the thicknesses of your layers. And so for that, we go to our, show you where this goes, our SU8 protocol that's usually sitting up here. <laughs> And depending on what thickness of layer you want to do, you'll choose a different SU8 epoxy. So the part of the document that describes for you how to create the thickness of, of the layer that you want is this graph right here. The x-axis is spin speed and the y-axis is film thickness. Alternatively, um, we have also determined in our lab that what the SUE protocol says in the book doesn't always match with what we see. And so if you look here on the wall, we also have some empirical data showing RPM versus SUE thickness for SUE 100, it's about for 45 seconds. And the blue dots are the actual data, and the red dots are what we're in. The next step to the process is uh, setting up the spin coder with your settings. So this is the spin coder. Uh, right now I'm turning it off. And so you would walk up to the machine like this and you can try to switch it on with this power switch. And um, well, typically nothing will happen. Uh, in order for the device to turn on, you need the vacuum engaged. And so you turn this on until you can barely hear the whisper of air that says you have enough uh, vacuum on the system, and now the system should be uh, on and ready for you to program it. So when programming the spin coder, there are three RPMs that you have to set. Um, each RPM is in increasing amount. Um, the idea is that starting at an RPM of zero, it will ramp up to your first RPM and hold for a while, ramp up to the second, hold for a while, ramp up to the third, hold for a while, then there's a fourth ramp, which is the time it will take to slow slow down the spin coder. And so what really matters are the values of your RPMs, three RPMs, and then the durations. And so there's a ramp time for RPM one and a duration time for RPM one and so forth. And so that's what we're gonna set on this machine and you can look at my fingers and um, see how to program it. So what we do so when you have your spin coder set to the right settings, we'll be uh, choosing the right chuck to put on here. These chucks, we have two of them. One is usually on the machine, one is usually on the plenum. One of them has an O-ring, a rubber O-ring, that when a vacuum is applied, pulls your wafer to the chuck. So the one with the O-ring is better at securing your wafer for higher RPMs. The one without the O-ring uh, is less good at that, and I generally use it up to about 1,500 RPM, maybe 2,000. Um, so for our needs, we, we only need this one. Um, there is a flat on this hole, and that will match up with a flat that's on the chuck or on the, the spindle. And so when we put this on there, we do not want to force it. Instead, we give it a little wiggle and it should go down nice and easily like that. If you find yourself pounding on it, we need to stop. Okay, and then we wait. So now that we've chosen our chuck and we put it in place, um, and once it's seated, you can give it a little extra force just to make sure it is down, to make sure it slides down easily. Uh, we keep wafers up here on the, on the shelves and on the plenum. Um, we have clean gloves. We choose the wafer place it in here, and then ideally, we want this wafer to be centered on the chuck so that when we hit start, the 
wafer doesn't wobble significantly. So this is an acceptable amount of wobble, but preferably, le preferably less. Um, so now when we have the wafer on the chuck, then we can pour our PDM or our SUA. I'm not actually going to do that in this case, but I'll go through the motions. Um, so for this case, I'll, I'll be using SU-8100. I grab a lint-free wipe that's also up here. It's kind of like pouring wine. You don't want to dribble. So what you do is you turn the bottle, and as it starts coming out, you want to leave about a quarter to a half dollar size dollop. And as you rotate the bottle to keep from dribbling, you can catch it with the wipe to keep drips from extending down the bottle. It's important to try to pour the dollop in a centered fashion uh, because if it's off center and we start spinning, all the SU8 will fling off to one side. If you do pour it off center, you can still salvage it by tipping the wafer, uh, then you need to recenter the wafer. Also, another approach is if it's only a little off center is to just cover it and leave it for a few minutes and the drop will spread and it will be sufficiently centered then after that to uh, start. In other words, there's enough SU weight on either side of the center point. So then, um, as we're about to run it, um, we would keep our hands on the start button to be ready and listening for any issues to occur. And then uh, essentially you would maintain this position until the program is done, being ready to stop, and then um, it should end automatically, but I'm going to end it early. Once it's done, we would have our SU-8 uh, hot plate ready for us. We want to try to lift it without touching the top side of the wafer. So we bring it over here. We place it on the hot plate. One finer point is that there's always a flat edge on each wafer, and I would just keep a consistent protocol where you keep putting the flat edge in the same direction. The reason for that is if the hot plate is not level appropriately, then um, the layer of SU8 will be kind of wedge shaped, thinner on one side, thicker on the other. But if you keep consistent, then each layer is at least parallel to the next. So when you have a moment in your SU8 master fabrication, um, you should always reassess um, how much SU8 is in the spin coder. And so when SU8 starts to pool into the bottom, uh, it can get messy and starts filling the bottom, and um, we don't want that to happen, and it can also get on the chuck, and so we want to be able to clean, clean this situation up. Um, so here's how you do it. Uh, you can pull off the chuck, and depending on which chuck you have, one of them has an O-ring on the inside, the other one doesn't. It's, you can best clean it if you use a dental pick to remove the O-ring, but be careful not to scrape or scratch or break that o-ring so we want to be very delicate when we pull it out and then we're going to use acetone and su8 developer to to clean it off so we'd spray and use that here and we can use lint free wipes to wipe it down when we're done inside here we would remove the coil pull it out Take two lint-free uh, lint wipes, place them down here. We make sure the light can access all the pieces of the tin foil. We would set the UV to 999 seconds. It also helps if you get a piece of cardboard like from a box. And I'll, I'll leave this down here. But basically, uh, it helps to protect others from, from the UV. And then you set it and walk away. Um, so after it's exposed, 
It should look uh, much more brown than it did originally, something like this, and now it's safe to dispose of. Now we have to replace the tin foil. So I'll actually do it for you. <coughs> Here's the tin foil. We like the, the nice wide kind because then we can cover the whole bottom. We're going to pull off a square. Fold it once, but don't crease it. Fold it again in half, and don't crease it. Then tear the, in, the innermost corner. That'll do. Just create use a tin foil in the hole for the chuck. Prior to putting the tin foil in, we would use uh, lint free wipes and acetone to wipe out the inside and also the spindle. Once that is clean, put this down in there and the hard part about doing this is putting it in without tearing your tin foil. But relatively speaking, tin foil is cheap, so uh, if you do tear it, just go ahead and you start over. And this creates a, a one piece uh, tin foil inlay that can capture the SU8 epoxy without it draining into the middle. And now we're good.